So let's talk about Brock Lesnar. And we talked about Goldberg leaving and, and Brock Lesnar had his last match at WrestleMania 20 as well. You can hear about that in the archives. Of course, something to wrestle.com. Wade Keller would report that, uh, Brock did an interview in Minnesota with Mike Morris on K fan radio. And he said that his dream had always been to play for the Minnesota Vikings. And he left the WWE because he didn't want to be 40 years old, wondering what could have been. And he left the door open saying, I'm not saying I may never go back there, but I'm walking away from the wrestling business for now. And he advised that people could go online and read why he had been unhappy. And he confirmed the torch reports that he told Vince McMahon of his unhappiness with the scheduled demand six months prior, and that he planned to quit two weeks prior to WrestleMania and then confirmed that decision just one week later. And he almost made it sound like he was closing that chapter of his life, but he stressed how much he wanted to spend time with his daughter and how he had begun intense training to try out for the Minnesota Vikings. When you guys hear, you know, the news that, Hey, he really is moving forward with this football dream. Was it met with a lot of skepticism in the office? I don't know if it's skepticism. Skepticism. It was okay. How long, how long will that last? Right. When you, you have a machine like that, Brock Lesnar is still is, you know, a very unique animal. And, what he did best was wrestle. That's what he had never played football. So it, it was kind of shocking, but at the same time, he's the kind of athlete. <laughs> if he puts his mind to it, he's going to do everything that he has to do to make it come to fruition. So there were people that said, God, I wish he would do what he does best wrestle. But there were also those that knew him. that were like, He's putting his mind to it. He's going to do every fucking thing he can to make this thing a reality or get his ass kicked doing it. And Brock was bound and determined he was going to make it work. And he was, he was going to find out one way or another whether or not he could play football. And that was a dream he had. It was something he wanted to try. And he did it, you know, and he went out and, and did it. But I think there were, there were those of us that, and I'll say for me included that, I wanted him back. I, I, <laughs> I wanted him on the roster. I didn't want him playing football or doing something else. So um, I was skeptical because he, he had never he had never really played football. And the odds of being able to walk on and make that a reality are very slim. But he was able to do it and prove everybody wrong. Steve Austin also left the company at the end of April. Uh, Wade Keller would report Steve Austin is a free agent five years ago. Those words would have reverberated across the wrestling industry worldwide and threatened to shift the balance of power towards the highest bidder today. It's barely a headline story due to Austin's health and his lack of options in wrestling outside of WWE negotiations reached a break point last week, leading to WWE posting a statement on their website, WWE and Steve Austin part ways. It was followed by a standard pithy statement saying they were unable to come to terms on a new agreement and mutually agreed to part ways. And it was said both parties are open to negotiations in the future. And then WWE wished him luck. Sources say the negotiations came down to a simple yet unresolvable difference. Austin's desire to gain the use of the stone cold moniker for non WWE projects and WWE's unwillingness to transfer such rights. Austin had become eager to test his marketability on projects without being beholden to the WWE schedule of weekly appearances on raw. And although there have been widespread reports of ill will between Austin and Vince McMahon during the negotiations, sources say that wasn't the case. Although Austin hired a lawyer to negotiate for him in the end, it was a mutual decision between both Austin and McMahon to part ways for now on reasonably good terms, although not without frustration on both sides. Austin will be forced to try to make a go of his post WWE career without the use of the stone cold moniker that his then wife Jeannie came up with in 1996. Chat me up here. What do you remember about Steve Austin? Not coming to terms to come back. It does feel like the end of an era, you know, somebody who is arguably the biggest star in the history of the company and made the company the most money. And now he wants to try his hand somewhere else. And allegedly the sticking point is this stone cold moniker. What do you remember about him leaving here and this particular stone cold piece of business? 
Well, I wasn't involved in, in the official negotiations. And from my recollection, for the most part, it was, it's time to renew. It's time to do a new contract. And while Steve was unable to be Stone Cold Steve Austin from the Attitude Era, there was still a place for Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, on the roster and to be a part of WWE. And I think that it, it's tough when you're put in a position that, hey, I, I can't be what I used to be, but I still want to make the same money. And I still want to have the same things afforded to me, and, and I want to do other things. It's, it's you want your cake and eat it too. So I, I don't know. That's just my feeling. I don't know if that's the case because Vince really wanted to keep Steve, and Vince really wanted Steve to stay with the company. And I think Steve really wanted to stay with the company too. And a lot of times in situations like that, guys will hire agents or they'll hire lawyers. It removes them from the process. So it doesn't become personal. And that's a tough thing to do. Um, in this case, that's what Steve did. And they were unable to come to an agreement. It, it's as simple as that, that, you know, Vince want, he wants his IP that he made famous and that he, you know, put on the map. Um, Steve wanted to do other things, still wanted to do stuff with the WWE, but, but wanted to be able to freely go out and do other stuff as well. Um, and I think Vince was like, okay, if I'm going to invest, then I need to reap the rewards of that investment. And guys forget that sometimes that it's, you know, Vince, Vince made it happen. It's, it's his, it's his vehicle that brings them to the spot. He wants to, you know, continue to reap those rewards because he's the one to put in the initial investment. It just boiled down to, um, can't come to terms right now. And if you want to go out and pursue other interests and you want to pursue movies, you want to pursue television shows, whatever else you want to do, good luck. And we'll help you where we can. But, um, Sometimes you just got to, you got to move on. And that's where it's kind of where it felt this time that they just couldn't agree on this, what we're going to do this amount of money. And here's a storyline going forward. Well, Vince didn't have a storyline going forward because he didn't have a commitment to say, yes, I'm going to stay in and do this. And Steve really wanted to to try other things. So sometimes that's best. It's best for everybody. For for some for a talent to go away, you realize how much you either needed them, you know, wanted them, or maybe you didn't. Maybe you were getting along fine without them. And for a talent, sometimes it's best to go out and see that sometimes the real world isn't as kind as it is when you're within the company. And maybe sometimes there's a lot more opportunity out there for you. So it's, it's, there's a lot of different sides to that coin. And with this one, it just came down to, we can't make an agreement right now. Best of luck. We'll see you down the road. It, it wasn't any animosity here at all. 